Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be revisiting a very peculiar type of objects discovered in the middle of 2020. The objects that scientists refer to as orcs, odd radio circles. Something that I briefly discussed in one of the videos back in August or July of 2020. And with the paper now reviewed and published officially, I figured it was a good time to revisit these objects to talk a little bit more about them and to see if we discovered something else about them. But first of all, a brief review. Now, to be honest, I don't think many of us know what it feels like to discover something completely unknown out there. This is what Ray Norris, the professor whose study you can find in the description below, and his teammates probably felt when they originally spotted these objects. And imagine, some astronomers and some scientists probably go through their whole lives never really discovering anything new and anything that we didn't know about. So finding a peculiar object somewhere out there in the universe that no one has ever seen before, that must feel pretty exciting. So this is the story of these orcs, odd radio circles. And the story is going to be actually pretty short. That's how little we know about them. When the initial investigations of the radio map of the universe discovered these objects, the scientists really had no idea what they were looking at. These were strange radio circles identified by scientists working in Australia, and all of them were quite easily visible. But why is it that we only discovered them last year? Well, the answer to that is pretty easy. The Australian Square Kilometer Array Telescope has become extremely easy to use and operate and can now produce a lot of data, a lot of radio data, extremely quickly. And because of this, we now have a very accurate radio map of the night skies, at least from the southern hemisphere. And this naturally created a lot of new opportunities for radio astronomers to study the night skies and to now discover a lot of new things. With one of the first objects being found not so far away from the large Magellanic Cloud. But the interesting thing about this discovery is that it didn't take long for them to find more of these objects and all of them were identified by just looking at the radio map. It didn't require any special processing, it didn't really require any kind of machine learning or anything, they were just easily visible with the naked eye as long as you convert the radio frequencies to visual light. And because all of these objects were circular, all of them had radio emissions only, no visual, no x-ray, no gamma ray, no infrared emissions whatsoever, and also because they were really strange, the scientists named them odd radio circles, orcs for short. Four of them are very easy to see, and there are probably six more that are still being studied. So basically we have 10 of them so far. But because they don't seem to emit any other light, and because they only produce radio waves, that's really what makes them extremely strange. Most objects out there, most galaxies, most stars, will usually emit different types of frequencies. For example, here's what our sun looks like in the X-ray light, and here's what it looks like in the infrared. And here is a rough picture of the sun in radio waves. So in other words, the sun itself produces a lot of different emissions in different spectra, and this is typical of most objects out there in the universe. Black holes, neutron stars, even planets will produce different frequencies of light. But in this particular case, the odd radio circles are only odd and circular in radio waves. They don't have any other emissions. Additionally, they also seem to possess slightly brighter edges. So in other words, all of the ones we've seen so far seem to have at least some of the edges much brighter than the other regions, which is why they're more ring-like structures or circular structures rather than possibly being spherical objects. Suggesting that it was probably produced by some sort of a powerful event that happened once not something that continuously emits these radio waves across the entire region of space. But it's also interesting to compare these to, for example, a typical supernova. So here's, for example, the famous Tycho supernova. It's also a circular event, and it's an event that we know was caused by a supernova, a star explosion. Here's, for example, what all of this looks like in the X-rays. And here's what all of this looks like in radio waves. And you can actually find more about this from the study in the description below. Here's another famous supernova known as Cassiopeia A, with the radio image being right here. And notice how both of these images don't really resemble the orcs almost at all. There is some similarity, but it's very, very minuscule, which does suggest that whatever produced these objects is probably something entirely different. 
And that's also one of the conclusions in the paper. The supernova could not have produced these unusual objects. And they're also not really something that's produced by a star or a planet. They're not related to, for example, a protoplanetary disk, which is the only other circular object that we can think of. They're not related to starburst galaxies that normally do produce certain types of circular emissions and circular radio waves. And generally, they don't seem to correspond to any known astronomical objects. So basically, this right here seems to be definitely a completely new astronomical object. Something that has never been seen before and something that needs a completely new explanation. Sort of reminiscent of the other radio wave object known as fast radio burst that was originally identified back in 2007, but we've now kind of identified at least one object, a magnetar, that can actually produce these. With orcs though, we're basically completely clueless. We have no idea what they are, what made them, and what's even more important here, we don't even know how big they are. Naturally, I've been showing you this, which is an object in our own galaxy, and it does seem to be some sort of a nebula. At least it does look circular, like it's produced by some sort of a star. But in this case, the scientists currently think that it's probably really, really far away from us, and it's probably also millions of light years across. And here, if we were to try to imagine this, if this is a typical galaxy, let, let's just say this is size of the Milky Way galaxy, they could be as large, if not larger, than the halo of this galaxy. They could be extremely huge. And whatever produced these objects must have been really energetic, coming from the center of a galaxy. But in this case, it only makes sense for a couple of these objects, because they do seem to have a galaxy in the middle. The other ones don't. At least not invisible so far. And on top of that, there's also now a belief that so many of them, possibly thousands of them, are hiding out there that we just haven't found yet. The ones that were found so far were just very easily visible. The other ones are probably hidden in the data that we just need to analyze and identify using other methods. And to our knowledge so far, the only thing that's so powerful is maybe a supermassive black hole in the middle of a galaxy. Maybe that's what's producing them. But we know that a typical radio galaxy usually has very random, very unpredictable emissions that don't have circular patterns. It's very difficult to explain such an almost perfect circle that we're observing from orcs. And the only other explanation, the Einstein rings or the gravitational rings formed by something extremely massive in front of a bright object, also can't really be used to explain this because these objects here are just way too symmetrical and don't seem to possess any clusters or any massive objects in the middle of them, so nothing should be producing these to begin with. But because we know nothing about them and because they're so mysterious, it didn't really take long for someone out there to propose something that is actually kind of cool, but most likely is not the answer. A couple of Russian scientists proposed that, hypothetically, maybe these are signs of extremely massive and very large wormholes. And they go into more detail, suggesting that some of the ring galaxies we're observing are possibly connected to these wormholes as well. In their proposition, they suggest that certain types of magnetic wormholes would actually create these very, very large circular radio formations that might have no explanation. And they point at this study, suggesting that maybe this is exactly what we found. But because this is a very, very early hypothesis and has no peer review whatsoever yet, this is a very early proposition and most likely is not a real explanation. But it sure sounds cool and will definitely create a lot of buzz in the years to come. And so in the end, what do we know about these objects and what do we think they are? Well, we know that, hypothetically at least, there could be thousands of them in the night skies, we just haven't found them all yet. We also know that for the most part they seem to be between about 800 to about 1088 MHz in frequency, and they also all seem to have relatively high galactic altitude. We seem to be mostly finding them in the higher parts of the galactic plane, suggesting that they're definitely extragalactic objects outside of our own galaxy. We also know that at least two of them are relatively close together, suggesting that maybe it was created by the same type of an event. But they're not exactly in the same spot, so wherever it was, it most likely moved across. And as mentioned, we also know that they only produce radio waves, they don't produce any other frequencies of light. But everything else is unknown to us. Most importantly, we have no idea how far away they are. And by knowing how far away they are, we can actually estimate the total energy needed to produce them. So for example, if this was a very close object, then maybe it's related to some kind of a stellar object, possibly a small black hole, a neutron star, 
something that we can kind of deal with. Whereas if this object is super far away, it probably was produced by something extremely powerful, extremely massive, and something related to a galactic event. Something so extremely powerful that we probably can't even imagine it right now. And in that sense, it's actually probably one of the most exciting discoveries of the last few years. Something new, something mysterious, something nobody can actually explain right now. And so on that note, I'm actually really looking forward to hear more about the discoveries about these unusual objects. And most importantly, I'm looking forward to more studies, finding new orcs, finding new circular radio objects out there, and most importantly, providing possible clues on their origin and what created them. But until then, check out all of the papers and other media in the description below, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description below. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.